Okay, so when we finished that module about APIs, we'd successfully called the Analyze API, and we passed it a picture of a polar bear, and it had returned to some JSON. So if I, this is the exact code that we have been looking at. So I've just taken that same code here, and when we run this code, um, scroll down through here, it had returned a pile of JSON, and it looks sort of like this if I lint it. This is sort of the data we had returned back. So what I want to do now is I want to add a little bit of code that returns just one of the values. Let's start with the basic key value pair. So here's a very simple key with a value that was returned in my JSON. So I want to add a line of code that says return from me to me the value of request ID. So what I've done in my code is I've gone, this is exactly the same code we had earlier, scroll down, and I just, before I just done that json.dumps command, I did import JSON, by the way, at the very beginning of this. And I'm using the JSON dumps method to just dump the JSON out on the screen. But if all I want is one particular key value, I can just say, let's get the request ID. So by doing a print results, because remember results is the name of the variable that contains the results that were passed back by my API call. So up here I said response equals request.post, and then I said results equals my JSON that was passed back. So here's my call to the API. Whoops, sorry, a little too fast there. So here is my call to the API where I called request.post that we covered in the API module. Those results are put into response. I call response.json to take the JSON passed back and put it into a variable. And then I can ask for a particular key. So I say, go give me the value of request ID. I've also got the raw JSON displaying a spade as well because I find that helps me when I'm doing my debugging. Oops, I'm on the wrong slide there. Um, let's go here. So now let's run it. Read key pair. And it should show me the entire JSON, and then it should show me just the value of that request ID. So here you can see the whole JSON string that I had copied and pasted into the linter to try and understand it. And then you can see the request ID value was this long string here, and you will actually see, here it is, request ID is that value. So I'm able to extract just one key value pair from the output. Now, what if I want to read subkeys? Uh, the other thing we had here was these colors, and what if for a particular color I want to know the subkey of the dominant color background or foreground? So to do that, same thing, except at the bottom, what I have to do is I have to specify that go into the color, and within the color, return the dominant color background. So the only thing I've changed here is I've changed this one line of code to say go to color, dominant color background. So if I run that, and this is in a different file, so I'm going to call read subkey.py. By the way, all these files are in the GitHub repository, so you'll be able to download this, play with this, poke around with it yourself. And again, you'll see the full JSON displayed, and then you'll see that one specific color. So you can see here we had the dominant color background in the JSON was white, and you can see here that I see my code successfully retrieved that one value from the JSON. If you have a list of values, we were talking earlier about how for tags, for example, to see what was in the image, it gave me a list of all the different tags of things it found in the image. What if I want that full list back? Well, then what I need to do is after I've called it, and I've got my JSON in that results variable, I can actually have two options. I can write a for loop that says for each item in the results description tags, print out that item. That will loop through and show me all the tags. Or you could say retrieve the first tag, or the second tag, or the third tag, and so on. So I'll just retrieve that first tag. So now if I run that, list.py, and you can see what happens here. I'll just move this up so you can see all the output a little bit better. You can see here's the raw JSON that was printed, and you can see all the tags. And you can see this is how it appeared in the original JSON. And you can also see the first tag that was read, which was bear, which is indeed the first tag that was returned. So those are some examples. You really have to play with it. Call an API, try this out, explore, try retrieving different values to practice how to navigate that JSON. It really does come with practice. There's also a lot of great tutorials online that give you a lot more detail on JSON. Now what if I need to create JSON from my code? Well, as I said, dictionaries have key value pairs, so we can create a dictionary in Python and then convert that into a JSON. So if I create a dictionary object, which we covered in the collections module, 
And I say I have a key value of first with a value of Christopher, key value of last with a value of Harrison. I add another key pair if I need to. So I might be reading values from a file and adding the key values dynamically as my code is running. And once I've added all the necessary values to my dictionary, I call that same json.dumps function. I pass it a dictionary, and it will then create a JSON object for me. So if I go here and we run this, you will see that JSON object that got created from my dictionary. So that is create JSON from dictionary.python. And you can see there is the actual output. You can see I have successfully created valid JSON syntax. If you need that, that's just for straight key value pairs. If you have subkeys with subvalues, you have to put a dictionary inside a dictionary. So that was the one where I sort of said, hey, uh, let's create a staff dictionary and uh, assign a person to a staff position of program manager. So what I've done here is I have that same person dictionary, then I create a staff dictionary, and for the program manager key, I assign the entire person dictionary. So now I have a dictionary in a dictionary, and when I run this code and I convert that to JSON using the same function, the dictionary to dictionary becomes converted into keys and subkeys. So if I run that, create JSON with nested dictionary. There you go. You can see I have that sub -val those sub keys. So this is that key of program manager, and for program manager, I have a series of sub keys. Finally, I might need to put a list, kind of like those tags, into JSON. I might need to create one with that format. That's done by creating a list item. So I create a dictionary object, same as I did before. And then what I'm doing is I'm creating a list object, and I'm assigning that list as a value to one of my keys in the dictionary. So when I add the languages key to my person dictionary, I give it the entire list. And then I convert that to a JSON object. And when I print this one out, You can see that it successfully created in my dictionary the key of languages, and the value for languages is an entire list. This can be really confusing. You're going to have to practice it. I really recommend go to the GitHub, download this code, play with it, practice creating different structures, practice reading different values from inside the JSON. It will come with practice. Um, but now you've got enough to read the outputs of those APIs, so really you're starting to open up the world. But Christopher's got a few more tips for you to help you out when you're working with APIs.